the documentary is going to be very, very, very popular because I think it deals with somebody who was good in music, which is which, which is me. It's it's not just that any guy off the streets music. You know, it's special music. When Brian started making records, that's when I started buying records, and having been exposed to all of this. I love playing this record. You know, I mean, I listen to it because it makes me feel good. And I can only go by that. So it's just music I love hearing. So I guess that's my feeling about the record. Meant for you. What it really is, is it's, it's about meditation. When I sit and close my eyes, there's peace in my mind. And I'm hoping that you'll find it too. Brian's music is the Bible because you go there, you find any answer you want. It, you can get you out of any tight spot. So I would say that as a producer, the more I worked, the more I realized how deep Brian's work was and how great his contribution to the art of record making was. This whole world is probably my favorite on the whole soundtrack. It's really rock and roll music. You know, it's definitely a rocker. And it's all about how each day you can find more love, you know. So it's, it's a very, very spiritual rock and roll song. Anyone who's producing records today is in some way a, a distant relative of Brian Wilson's. Just about every person making pop music today has absorbed something that Brian Wilson did either as a, as a songwriter or as a musician or an arranger. Or, in, or as a producer. Caroline No is what I would consider a love ballad with a Glenn Miller type of a vibe to it in the, the fade out. It's a very, very big ballad. That, that song had, had a really great song, I think. Probably the best I've ever written. If you wanted to be a little impressionistic about it, it's unnecessary to see the documentary film to know the story about Brian Wilson. If you just listen to his vocal on Caroline No, I think you get the whole picture because he's, he's been to the dark side, you know, and he's, he's seen the things that take your innocence away. And you can hear that in there, and yet he still sounds innocent and optimistic in there. That's, I guess that's the Brian Wilson story. My main trip in life is being a versatile artist, to be able to sing many different kinds of songs and different sounds in my throat. I'm very proud of the fact that I have a versatility. There are two ways to go back and re-record your old stuff. One is kind of cheesy, which is not what we did, which is to say, well, I'll just re-record those old classics again, and this time I'll own them all and, you know, and start fresh and we'll make a whole lot of money with that. And there are a lot of people who've gone back and done that. It took me a while to convince Brian to deal with the whole package, which is looking back, you know, because I think Brian, you know, as long as I've known him, has been very much in the mindset to, like, let's move forward. I got these new songs. Let's let's do these. So I, I felt it took a little persuasion, but it wasn't just about re-recording the songs. It was the, the whole thing. Why make a movie about something that, that already happened? I, th I see the inclusion of Let the Wind Blow as an important component in the, in the total picture because it's just plain quirky. It's a weird song, but a great song in its own right. So I think that's uh, the quirky delegate to the record. <laughs> It really wasn't hard to make the record or to make the, the film. It was a, a good, positive experience that didn't take a whole lot of time. Because he's a hero of mine, I wanted to do something that would be great, that would be helpful, and that would be, you know, an important part of his legacy. My favorite was uh, Love and Mercy because it was a way to put God's love into a song. Do it again, it's like that. I mean, it's, you know, the addition of Carney and Wendy. I think the inclusion of the girls makes it a really significant thing.
they're they're pretty, you know, very pretty daughters, and uh, the mm-hmm. the girls are are right on. I mean, they can sing good, they can sing anything, you know. So I enjoyed working with them. I would think that they would get that we had something to say to the world, like the Beach Boys had a mission in life, you know, to bring love and joy to people. The Warmth of the Sun, of course, was written on the on the uh, the day that uh, President Kennedy was assassinated. So Mike and I went up to my office suite on the eleventh floor and uh, on Vine Street in Hollywood, and uh, we went up there. And I was just plunked around, the, and, I, and he said, "Wait, play that again." And then he started thinking of these words, and he and I both knew that it was about President Kennedy, but we didn't say a word to each other. It was like such a complete bummer that he was assassinated. So we did that. We wrote this we wrote the song and. It's all there. The Warmth of the Sun represents a point in rock and roll songwriting where the chord changes really start to deviate from the the conventional things that you were hearing in rock and roll. So even though the sentiment and the kind of texture that record is is clearly you know linked to early '60s rock and roll, what Brian did with the chords was unparalleled. I mean, no one was really stretching out like that, and Warmth of the Sun represents to me the, the, the first step in that. Wonderful takes this deviation from conventional chord structure and accelerates down to a, a higher gear. You know, it, 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 it's another notch in the evolutionary cycle, I think. Chords are very complex. It took me a long time to figure out what was going on in that harpsichord and yet it's one of the few songs from the smile era that are complete enough and melodic enough to perform in this context well still i dream of it that really was written written for stevie wonder but I, it never got to Stevie Wonder. Well, I, you know, I, I pulled it together pretty quick. You know, I mean, it was like a, it was a very heavy song, you know, but it was pulled together real quick, and it was like, I'm still gonna try to get get it to Stevie Wonder, you know, someday, some year, some some decade or whatever, you know, some some century. Steve Stevie Wonder can sing for us. I think it's one of the most amazing songs I've ever heard in my life and the, the, it's not accidental that, the, that it starts with something earthly and mundane and, and, and goes to the most complex issues it's, that's, that's pretty brilliant oh well Melt Away was uh, a ballad and uh I didn't really particularly think it was that good a ballad, uh, you know, when, when, when we when we did it. But uh, when, I, when I'd sign autographs on uh, promotional tour, and most a lot of people said that uh, "Melt Away" was their favorite. "Till I Die" moves at a slower pace, and and yet the chords are so they're, they're so powerful. And what, what you know, the musical. Uh, tapestry that he that is woven with these highly unlikely chords is to me that's the apex of pop songwriting till i die most of it was like the feeling of you know humbleness and of being real small you know and some of the lyrics like i'm a rock in a landslide or i'm a i'm a cork in the ocean you know floating over the raging sea you know it's just poking fun at how helpless and, and small i really am yeah, that's what it really was all about. I think most of the people that, that will see and hear this documentary will think that I've come a long way since, you know, the 60s. So it really is about Brian's music. The, the film is really for people who've heard the phrase, Brian Wilson is a genius, but they don't. What, what do you mean he's a genius? Well, to a non, it's very hard for a musician to sit there and explain to a non-musician w- what it is about this song that's, that's amazing. So the point of the movie was really to explain that to, to the layman, I guess. You know? But in discussing where the music comes from, you get this, you know, elements of, of Brian's 
life story because you can't really separate that from the music. So that's how I approached telling the story, which was through uh, an understanding of the music. This is Brian Wilson saying I, I enjoyed uh, doing this interview, and may all of you have a nice night. Thank you. <laughs>